Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now after experiencing the Vega 8 onboard graphics found on the Ryzen 3 2200G yesterday and being pretty impressed with the gaming results, curiosity got the better of me and it got me thinking, how do these onboard graphics compare to an older generation card, something like this? The 2GB 560Ti from NVIDIA. Now back in its day this was a $250 solution and even today it's still capable of running a few games, especially the 2GB version. So let's run some tests, see how the Vega 8 compares to this very card, just for curiosity's sake, and then we'll be discussing the results and uh, what to make of the findings afterwards. So let's get straight into it. So, a few things to discuss before we get started. I have swapped out the RAM for 16GB of DDR4 3200MHz today to make the most out of our system. Also, depending on the 560Ti version, performance results may vary. I'm using the Inno 3D version here because, well, it's one of my old cards. For the games that have it, I use the built-in benchmark tools for accuracy, but I will discuss the testing method for each game as we get to it. The CPU was not a bottleneck and allowed both graphics solutions to reach their maximum potential, and I've tried to make this as fair as I can. So I'm going to run through the benchmarks now and then discuss the results with you afterwards. So I started off with Assassin's Creed and boy were these results surprising. As you can see here with the Vega 8 at 1600MHz the gameplay ran at about 20 to 30 FPS in the benchmark but over on the 560 things were completely unplayable. I had a similar experience with my 1GB 560 Ti that I tested out a while back when I had to turn down the resolution scale all the way to even get anywhere near playable frame rates. As you can see, the Vega onboard graphics come out on top in both the 1080p and 720p tests. As we move on to Crisis, the 560Ti once again jumps back into the lead, but even at both 1080p and 720p, the Vega onboard graphics are indeed very impressive, and the game is playable across the board. One thing I will point out is that there was quite a bit of stutter um, across all of the results here. There were frame drops and things like that that mostly occurred sort of as you approached new areas or vast amounts of enemies, but it didn't make the game entirely unplayable if I'm honest. Now I'm sort of getting the results out of the way where the difference was most significant because the gameplay tests do get far more interesting as we get further into the video and you'll see what I mean by that in a minute. GTA 5 once again performed better on the 560 Ti but if we take a look at the graphs here you'll see that even the Vega onboard graphics performed very well at above 60 frames per second on average almost all of the time and the same can be said at 720p where we achieved mid 80s. As we move on to Overwatch the results start to become a little bit closer. Once again at medium here at 1080p the performance was very good on both the Vega 8 and 560 Ti discrete graphics card and if we take a look once again at the figure graphs you'll see that the 560 came out on top by about 15 to 20 frames per second on average but at 720p even the Vega 8 overclocked managed 100 fps on average. Battlefield 1 was where things started to get very close in terms of not only average results but 1% and 0.1% low figures as well which really took me by surprise. It seems here that there is no real difference between the two and if we head on over to our Microsoft Paint created graphs you'll see that it was very very close with just four to five frames in it between the Vega 8 overclocked and at 720p those results were even closer. The same can be said for Rise of the Tomb Raider. If we take a look at the gameplay here, I ran through the benchmark test at both 1080p low and 720p low as well. The game started off with fairly high frame rates on this mountain level, but once the benchmark got further on in the process, the frame rate did drop, and we were left with mid-30s in terms of frame rates for both the Vega and 560 Ti at 1080p, with mid-50s at 720p. Impressive. 
Finally, it's The Witcher 3, and this is where things were as close as they were going to be all day. Now, neither the Vega 8 or 560 Ti were able to achieve 30 FPS on average, which is odd, considering that with my 1 gigabyte 560 Ti a while back, I did manage 35 frames per second. But in the heart of Novigrad, the uh, system really did struggle here, whether we were using the integrated solution or the discrete GPU, as you can see by these 1080p and 720p results. So there we have it. One particular result that stood out was that of Assassin's Creed Origins, which really does not like older graphics cards. A similar sort of thing happened on my 1GB 560 Ti that I tested a while back. I've got that voice in the back of my head telling me that the Ryzen 5 2400G would have probably closed the gap in a few of those situations. So I'm looking forward to testing that out and comparing that to my 560 Ti as well when I eventually get my hands on one. In most real world situations, I think if you have a 560 Ti in your system, then chances are you also have a slightly older and perhaps less powerful processor. So the results between an older gaming PC featuring a card like this and the new Ryzen APU may be even closer when it comes to particular games. I think this really does go to show how far AMD's APUs have come, even since the last generation when I couldn't even dream of playing all of my favourite games with smooth frame rates like you saw today. And I hope this gives you some idea of how um, the Vega 8 graphics fit into the grand scheme of things. Guys, this video has been a lot of fun to make. I hope you enjoyed watching it. If you did, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And I will be testing the Ryzen 5 2400G very soon. Thank you as always, and I'll see you in the next one.